always a worry when you splash back in after doing some work on the boat, you know, is everything going to work again? Is it going to leak? Morning campers, look at this, it's a bright sunny morning and uh, we've spent a few days just doing nothing really. It's been quite nice just doing nothing sitting there. It's been a little bit of weather over on the other side but uh, I think that's mainly down the west side of the South China Sea so uh, forecast looks all right. We actually waited an extra day because there's supposed to be some southwesterly winds coming through. Can't see them yet. Anyway, uh, we're about to weigh anchor and up to a 30 mile trip today. I say up to because we're not actually sure where we're going. It depends on the sea state on the other side. Looks like we were lucky to leave the boatyard when we did. For the, uh, the last couple of months during lockdown, there's been hardly any activity in the boatyard and literally two days after dropping back in the water, there's already three boats there lining up to be hauled out and they've already hauled out another two and it's only 8.30 in the morning. So looks like they're starting to get busy again. That time we got busy too. Uh, first time in two months we've actually going somewhere, which is brilliant. Left the boatyard a couple of days ago, but we've been hanging around waiting for the weather. Uh, there was something big going across the South China Sea, and then we, eventually we thought, oh bugger it, let's just go. <laughs> so we're not really sure exactly where we're going to end up. There is a very nice spot around the corner where we've been, been before, where there's a very nice little beach bar in the mood for that that would be great but the swell just might be too much for us to anchor there so we'll check it out first uh, and then if that's no good we've got plan b which is a little bit further down the west coast of northern Sabah. there's a couple of really nice protected anchorages so we'll see how the day progresses at the moment lovely sunny sky not much wind but we're hoping that'll build up as we reach the top and go around the tip of um, the very northern tip of Sabah. See what happens. We should explain that in this part of Malaysia, i.e. Borneo, there are few and far places, few and far, is that right? <laughs> there are few places to anchor. Far and between. Far and between <laughs> to anchor uh, yeah. in, in the seasons. Uh, you can probably see right now, actually, we're at anchor on Borneo and maybe you can see the horizons doing this a bit. We've got a, a bit of a swell coming in. And of course, with the northeast monsoon, there are only certain places we can anchor. Uh, plus we get this uh, counter current that comes up the coast and that's pretty much set at about a knot and that yeah. also plays a little bit of havoc. Yeah, I mean it's specifically where we are in northwest Borneo, so it's the coast of Sabah that we're talking about here, this little bit, this little bit that we're allowed to be in mm. that, that has these problems and uh, two days ago it was flats of pancake in here but as you say the wind moved round. The seas move round? Uh, I think the seas are in the transitional now, so yeah. you do get sort of disturbed weather patterns. And uh, But I think this, this will last for a few hours and then it should be all right again. Yeah, if it gets any worse, we'll up well, sticks, just up and, sticks and go around. Yeah. Yes, it's a mild inconvenience. <laughs> um, a bit like this advert. If you see ads, here's an inconvenient advert for your viewing displeasure. <laughs> The joy of going back into the water is always slightly tinged with a little bit of anxiety. You know, you're never quite sure, so you've done a whole load of repairs and uh, maintenance, you've done all that, and uh, just to make sure that those repairs and maintenance are working properly. Well, normally what happens is when you drop in the water, the first thing you do is go and check your sea cocks. Yeah. Yeah, 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 especially since I did the maintenance on those. Mm. I was very worried this time, and we had them all up, up and ready to check, and that was all. That was all okay, so that Drip, was... Dripless seal. And the dripless seal. Yeah, those so we put a new dripless seal in, so... So we do course. those, actually, while we're still in the sling, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, so there's a problem, it comes straight back out. So there's that. Then there are all the things that you haven't done. So your boat's been on them hard for two <laughs> months and you haven't really been able to run the engine or do the normal checks that you would do in that time. So that's the next thing to think about, all the things, because boats go wrong if you don't use them. So we've just spotted a couple of issues already. Uh, the first thing is the tachometer is not working. Turned the engine on this morning. It seems to be stuck at uh, 
thousand RPM. Increase the revs. It's not moving. We can hear the revs all, all right, but we can't actually see what the revs are on the tack. It's probably some kind of wire problem. The other thing that's happened is that this chart plotter here, it's not a touch screen, it's a manual job uh, with analog buttons and the right button to push the cursor right is not working either. Now, I suspect that obviously these are electronic issues and this is what happens in the tropics. It's also what happens when you don't use your boat for a while, things start to go wrong. Especially electrics, what we've found in the past is that uh, electrics need to, need to be used, all your electronic items need to be used, this is why we say even when you're in a marina, is to turn your instruments on every now and then, uh, just to keep those cables dry. And I suspect that this chart plot has got a bit of dampness in it and probably, hopefully, just needs to dry out. I'm sure there are going to be other things that we'll find, so we're going to take it reasonably easy, not bash it on our first day. I don't know, maybe I should look at the fan belt. Could be a loose fan belt, but we appear to be charging all right. Yeah, we'll have a look at that at the next anchorage, I think. Can't think of anything else. Anything else? Oh yeah, the dripless seal, which Jamie changed in the yard. He keeps checking that. There's a little bit of splashing this morning, which he said we should expect a little bit of spray to begin with. And then we're gonna go back in an hour and have another look, because every time we do that, we have to empty the horrible cupboard. <laughs> of all these boxes and things that are all stacked up on each other. So they're spread around the boat at the moment. We'll go back and check that in about an hour or two. Uh, I don't know where we'll be at that stage, we'll find out. Well, no sooner did I say I'll check the fan belt at the next anchorage, I thought, no, that's a silly idea because if it is a loose fan belt, you want to deal with that now. So anyway, I just turned the engine off and uh, just check the fan belt and that seems to be okay. It's uh, pretty tight, so it's not the fan belt. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that it is just damp electrics because that's the sort of thing that will dry out. If they're marinized, then uh, they tend to sort themselves out. So after a few hours of motor sailing down the coast, we arrive at our first spot, which is called Agal Bay. And you may be able to notice there's absolutely no swell here. I don't know if you saw in the footage as we came down, there is quite a bit of northerly swell, which is why we couldn't stop at Robbie's place, Secret Beach, which is a bit of a shame. We had to send him a message and apologize and say, we'll come back up next time. But uh, there is a swell set in, and so this does obviously define where you can and can't go. This one, flat calm, look at this. And all we've got ashore is a few fishing houses, I suppose. No restaurants, nothing like that. A few fishermen buzzing around. And it looks like we got here just in time because you can just see behind me the usual late afternoon storm coming off the mountains. We are in a beautiful, quiet bay on the west coast of northern Sabah. There's nobody here but us. On land we've got a few small houses, we'll go and check out those tomorrow. And I can just hear the call to prayer. Yep, sunset, the call to prayer. And we've got rain and... And, uh, and lightning going on around us, but it's warm, it's still very, very warm. And the other thing is we've got homemade ginger beer by our friend Craig. It's got bits of ginger in it and it's quite alcoholic. <laughs> nice. I love it. It's lovely. Cheers. Here we are down below in your um, typical tropical storm and the reason why I wanted to record this is because the sound of the wind howling through the rigging is quite something but I don't think you can really hear it actually. Anyway what's happened is we got the usual southwesterly squall that's come through. It's absolutely battered us. Uh, wind speeds have only hit 20 knots, so it's it's not that big and there's no fetch, but lightning all around us. It's always very exciting to be in these conditions. And I was saying to Liz that, you know, one of the things I dislike about cruising is being stuck in an anchorage where the boat's doing this. It's one of my pet hates. 
uh, or even worse if it's doing that but uh, here there's no movement at all we're just surrounded by a lot of water let's go and have a look upstairs and see what it's like up there shall we That's the tropics, you get these lightning storms every night. We've got a big range of mountains there with Kinabalu at 4,000 metres, the highest point, and a whole <clears throat> range of mountains that goes down the uh, Sabah. So the moisture collects throughout the day and at night, down it comes. And here we are, enjoying a nice little bit of thunderstorm. But it's flat, look at this, it's great. Oh my god, that's the loudest I've ever heard. That was so loud. <laughs> oh, my oh. oh my word. In seven years, that's the loudest so far. Jesus. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? 